With the first half of 2023 practically over, with just one month left, it's time to turn our attention to the second half of 2023. What major announcements are we expecting from Canon, Nikon, Sony, and Panasonic? Well, stick around after this short intro as I go into a comprehensive recap of what you can expect to see announced in the second half of this year. But first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, but most importantly, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really does help this channel grow. And thanks to your support, this channel just passed 40,000 subscribers. 2023 got off to a big bang, with Panasonic's first stills hybrid camera ever with face detect autofocus, the Panasonic S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X. Canon followed up a few weeks later with a low-cost APS-C Canon EOS R50, the first Canon camera to introduce computational photography and finally do away with that cripple hammer. Announced on the same day was the Canon EOS R8. At $1499, it's not as cheap as the Canon EOS RP, but far more capable. And then just last week, Nikon released the much-anticipated Nikon Z8, Nikon's answer to the Canon EOS R5, with almost the same capabilities as the Nikon Z9, but for $500 less, and just $100 more than the very popular Canon EOS R5. Pre-orders are off the charts, with retailers saying that they've got more than enough inventory to meet these initial demands. Panasonic started off 2023 early and with a rather big bang. They announced the Panasonic S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X, and what was unique about those two cameras is that for the first time ever, Panasonic released a phase detect autofocus system, a brand new phase detect autofocus system for those cameras. So that unreliable, untrustworthy, that hunt and peck sort of kind of autofocus system that was pretty common with the DFD contrast detect autofocus system, long gone. So when we talk about the Panasonic S5 Mark II, we start talking about the video capabilities of this camera and a pretty decent autofocus system. But with those two cameras out of the way, and that was back in January, we're starting to ask ourselves very simple questions. Where's the S1H Mark II, the S1 Mark II, or even the S1R? You see, each of those cameras was announced some four years ago, four years ago, and well, three or four months in some cases with the S1 and the S1R. Now, a couple of months ago, I did publish a video about new specifications for the S1H Mark II, and my source, well, they completely went silent. And this sometimes happens when you're reporting on rumored specifications. Now, the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X, the source was almost bang on about the autofocus system, about the specifications in that camera. But this time around, a different source has completely dried up. But let's do a bit of a reality check. We are due for a refresh. The S1 and the S1R were announced some four years ago, as well as the S1H. No longer is 6K or 6K RAW acceptable. Cameras are now expected to be able to do 20 frames per second lossless RAW, 8K video, 8K RAW video at up to 30 frames per second, and the Nikon Z8, it can now do 8K 60 frames per second, or 8.3K up to 60 frames per second Nikon RAW. And while we don't have any credible information on what we could see on a cameras like a refresh of the S1H Mark II or even the S1, it's certainly plausible that we could start to see a refresh of this high-end S1 series or the S series later this month or even into June, but I think most likely in terms of a refresh, we could be looking at September or October or maybe even into the first half of 2024. I think it's highly likely that we'll see 8K video, 8K 24, 25, and 30 frames per second at a very minimum, and most likely 8K 50 and 60 frames per second. The Canon EOS R5 was the first stills hybrid camera to come out with 8K RAW at up to 30 frames per second. But now, as we've seen with many other cameras, the Nikon Z9 and the just recently announced Nikon Z8, we can now produce 8K video, 8K RAW at up to 60 frames per second. We can do Apple ProRes in 4K. We can do so many more capabilities and 8K now is not really considered a high-end capability. You're now starting to see it in cameras that cost around $2,000 thanks to Fujifilm. So we've got a lot more cameras doing 8K video and I think that the S1H, if it was to come out with just 6K RAW, 
I think it would be missing the boat. Having to wait four years or maybe even five years and not be able to do at least 8K up to 60 frames per second, I think that would be a fundamental mistake made by Panasonic, and I really don't see them doing that. So while we don't have any leaked specifications at this point, I definitely think being able to do 8K UHD DCI RAW up to 60 frames per second on the S1H Mark II is highly probable. 4K up to 120 frames per second detailed. But now in terms of a sensor, will we see a stack sensor? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. And it's really good to see that Panasonic is finally giving us the face detect autofocus system because some of those video centric features that we used to see such as false colors or waveforms, we're now starting to see that in the competition. I think this is good news for all of us. I think the Panasonic S1H Mark II is definitely gonna be one of those cameras we see refresh in the near future. But will we see an S1R Mark II, an S1 Mark II? Or will Panasonic kind of boil it down into two separate options, a video centric camera and a still centric camera? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. And now it's time to turn our attention to Sony. Sony is expected to announce a handful of cameras here in 2023. We already got the ZV-E1 and we are expecting another vlogging camera to be announced by the summer. But the most probable camera that we're expecting, the most desired camera by many, is a photocentric camera, the Sony A93. Sony Alpha Rumor says that the A93... The Sony A93 is definitely going to be announced later in 2023. The Sony A93 is definitely due for a refresh this fall. At that point, it will have been on the market for a total of four years. And Sony Alpha Rumors has been talking about this camera for about half that time. They put out many rumors and I quote, I have no idea who sent them and 90% of the times they turn out to be wrong. You can see the countless times that Sony Alpha Rumors has reported on the A93, Wild Rumor Roundup, ahead the new Sony A7R5, the A93 and a surprise camera, and another Wild Rumors Roundup including the A93. Specifications are all over the place from multiple different sources conflicting each other. In fact, we have so many wild rumors on the Sony A9 Mark III, the only thing we have credible from Sony Alpha rumors from Andrea himself is that we're definitely 100% getting the A9 Mark III this fall. And that would mean somewhere between the second week of September all the way up until the first week of November. The Sony A9 III, what would it do? What type of camera will this be? Well, according to Sony Alpha rumors, some of the sources coming in are saying, it's gonna be focused on stills. And this certainly makes sense for the A9 Mark II and certainly makes sense for the A9 Mark III. Several rumors have suggested that the A9 Mark III will get a stack sensor, full frame sensor around 24 megapixels. And that's right in line with a Canon EOS R3. In terms of that articulating screen that we saw on the Sony A7R5, well, Sony Alpha Rumors is telling us that, yeah, we're not supposed to be getting that with the A9 Mark III. And to me, that would be a huge mistake not to give us that four axis articulating screen, it needs to be in the A9 Mark III. The other thing we need to see, it's time for Sony to say, okay, you know what? Type A CF Express cards, they were great, but we finally outgrown them. When it comes to the A9 Mark III, if Sony doesn't go ahead and put in type B cards, then we're still gonna be limited to 10 frames per second. And for a camera that's supposed to last Sony, well, perhaps another four years, to be able to cap out at 10 frames per second at 61 megapixels or 24 megapixels, whatever it is, it's just not right. You see here in 2023, if you wanna shoot continuous high speed lossless raw, 20 frames per second will eat up 1.2 gigabytes per second. And that's well past the speed limit for type A cards. Well, type B cards, well, they can easily approach speeds of 1.48 gigabytes per second. That's a maximum sustained write speed. So you can hold down that shutter button 20 frames per second, do it for 20 seconds, a minute, two minutes, however long you can go without filling up that card, it's certainly plausible. There's one more Sony camera that's due for a refresh that might surprise some, and that's the Sony A7S IV. Now the A7S III was announced five years after the A7S II, and it, we had to wait a whole five years. Will we have to wait five years for this camera? Well, this would place it at around three years if we get an announcement in the fall three years as of August the 31st. But I'm not so sure that we're gonna see a refresh of the Sony A7S III in the A7S IV. Why? Well, we've got the FX3, we've got the FX30. Both of those cameras have the exact same specifications as the A7S III. Now, in terms of sales, we are seeing a lot of sales when it comes to the A7S III. So there might still be enough of a demand for Sony to release the A7S IV. But in terms of specifications, Again, this space has changed dramatically since Canon released the R5 
and one month later we got the a7s III. As I said earlier in this video, we have more than a handful of cameras now that can shoot 8K video, and we have multiple cameras that can shoot 8K RAW. The Canon EOS R5, the Nikon Z9, the Nikon Z8, and I believe it's the Fujifilm H X-H2. Um, forgive me if it's the X-H2S, because sometimes I get those interchangeable, but we have a lot of cameras that can shoot 8K RAW, and we have a lot of cameras that can shoot 8K in 24, 25, and 30 frames per second without any crop. And yes, I am looking at you, Sony A7R5. It can shoot 24 and 25 frames per second in 8K, and that's it, and with a 1.2 times crop. And the Sony Alpha 1, well, it can shoot 8K at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second, but it's such a small body that many people have suffered overheating problems, especially after the camera reaches that one year mark. I really do hope that the Sony A7S IV, if it does come out, will give us at least 8K video at 24, 25, 30 frames per second, as well as 50 and 60 frames per second. And 4K, well, definitely up to 120 frames per second, but I think this camera is kind of ripe for a stacked sensor. Not too many people believe that the Nikon Z8 would have a stacked sensor, and it does. The exact same stacked sensor, full frame sensor, found in the Nikon Z9. And the Canon EOS R5, while it doesn't have a stacked sensor, some of the rumors, of which we'll get to that camera shortly, are pointing to it having a stacked sensor as well. And with the Nikon Z8 putting out a stacked sensor, I'd be surprised at this point if Canon doesn't release the R5 Mark II with a stacked sensor. So there's an awful lot of pressure on Sony to not just release minor updates like Canon did for many, many years, while Sony was leading, coming out with new cameras every couple of years with specifications that were better than the competition. Now, Sony seems to be relaxing and not even catching up to the competition. The Canon EOS R5 was announced some three years ago, and Sony still hasn't put 8K in any camera except for the Alpha 1. The A7S III at the time was expected to be able to do a little bit more than it did, and now three years later, the A7S IV, if it is due to come out, well, we should expect more than 6K RAW. I really do expect that this camera needs, well, to be able to put in at least 8K, 24, and 25, 30 frames per second without any sort of crop, and also, like the A9, it should have a CF Express Type B card. At least one of them. Dual would be nice, but what we're seeing at this price point is we're not seeing dual. We're usually seeing we're usually seeing one CF Express Type B and one CF Express or and one UHS2 card. The Sony A6700, an APS-C censored camera to have the exact same 26 megapixel sensor found in the Sony FX30, is due to be released this summer. It's supposed to have seven stops of IBIS, 4K at 120 frames per second, and have a 1.19 times crop. Now, we are expecting a refresh of the Sony A7C in the A7C Mark II, but we've heard very little about that camera. Now, in terms of releases, an A9 Mark III and an A7S IV are most likely to come sometime in the fall. However, there is a chance we could get some summer announcements as well, but we'll just have to wait and see. Again, we are aiming at the second half. The first half is coming to an end very shortly. We just got about, what, six weeks left? I'm really curious to see what Sony releases and announces here in 2023, but CF Express Type B card slots, A7 IV, A9 Mark III, and the Alpha 1 Mark II. It's gotta happen. And 8K for the Sony A7S IV, the A9 Mark III. The A9 Mark III, it's not as critical, but for the A7S IV and definitely the Alpha 1 Mark II, when it does come out, we don't know when we're gonna get an announcement on that camera. It's not likely this year, it's most likely next year, but Sony could take even longer. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And now it's time to take a look at Canon cameras due out in 2023. First off, let's take a look at a couple of cinema cameras that were supposed to be announced at NAB 2023, but um, yeah, that didn't quite happen, but they are still due to be announced this year, as they were due to be announced last year and the year before. We're supposed to get a pair of 8K cinema cameras, the EOS C300S, and the C500S. Both are gonna be 8K, but one's gonna have an 8K Super 35 sensor, the other an 8K full frame sensor. But in terms of the output, you still get 8K 60 on both cameras, as well as 4K 120. Both will have a BSI stack DGO sensor. Both will have a dynamic range of 16 plus stops, 16 stops on the C300, and 17 plus stops on the C500S. And both will have the dual digit DV8 image processor, but there is also supposed to be a 4K cinema camera. 
it's going to be called the C300DR, have 4K full frame, 4K 120 frames per second, 240 frames per second fast mode, 180 frames per second WDR mode. It will also have a BSI stacked DGO sensor, dual pixel autofocus, but this one's going to have a staggering 20 plus stops of dynamic range, but also have that dual digit DV8 image processor. And I've been told that we could be getting an announcement of any of those three cameras, although the specifications have changed over time. One of them is supposed to have a replaceable sensor, um, so we'll just have to wait and see. We could still get an announcement this year, but in terms of when, could it be soon? Yes, definitely. Could we wait till the fall? That's also possible as well. We've been waiting for uh, an update to cinema cameras for quite some time. These were supposed to come out in 2020 at NAB, 2020 and this was when it was being held in the fall um, but yeah um, we've been waiting a long time for these but now let's turn to one of the most anticipated cameras of well 2023 slash 2024 and we have a bit of a twist canon rumor says that we've been told by an anonymous source that canon is planning to replace the eos r5 with not one but two models the source claims that canon will release the eos r5 mark ii alongside a higher resolution model. Perhaps the unicorn that is the EOS R5S. Well, wouldn't that be special? Two R5 cameras, a high megapixel camera that's been rumored since before we knew we had the R5, and that was back in late 2019. And then in early 2020, we were told that we were gonna have an EOS R camera that was gonna be around 100 megapixels. And every year since, on clockwork, we're told Yep, you can bet it. An EOS R5 camera with 100 plus megapixels is on its way. Somewhere around 105 megapixels, somewhere just under. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, in terms of rumored specifications for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, the successor to the R5, well, on November the 25th, Black Friday of last year, we got a whole heap and load of specifications. And they sounded too good to be true because they were. We were supposed to get an announcement in the second quarter of this year. And here we are. Second quarter is almost over. Sure, there's a chance we could get something this month or next month, but most likely the smart money saying is those specifications, there were so many red flags with them that, yeah, don't expect it. We were supposed to have 61 megapixels, dual digit image processors. We were supposed to have dual CF Express type B cards, 8K video up to 60 frames per second. We were supposed to be able to get 8K over sample 4K all the way up to 120 frames per second and some really impressive specifications, 30 frames per second stills. And um, yeah, 61 megapixels, 30 frames per second just sounds absolutely just, uh, well, the best camera out there. And it would be, it would even beat the Nikon Z8, which was just recently announced. But all those um, rumored specifications that Canon Rumors put out, Canon Rumors later came out and said that, yeah, we can forget all those specifications. But in terms of the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, it's a real camera. We are gonna see it. The only question is when. Latest leaked specifications or the latest leaked information indicate that the Canon EOS R5 II will most likely get an announcement in the fourth quarter, late October, early November, like the R6 Mark II. And it'll start shipping in early 2024, but I wouldn't be surprised. We haven't heard anything further and it's been several months. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets pushed further into 2024. So we'll get an announcement early in the year, and then it'll start shipping. And we are supposed to get the R5 Mark II shipping and out the door before the Canon EOS R1 is announced. Can you imagine Canon announcing the R1 and the R5 Mark II at the same time? No, you see, the R1 is supposed to be a master of everything. It's gonna have the best stills capabilities and best video capabilities of any Canon camera, past or present, all in a single box. And it's gonna be pretty impressive. It's gonna be for professionals. We don't know the pricing, we don't know the specifications, but this is what has been proven time and time again with the one series. There isn't a, there isn't a single camera, three series, five series, anything throughout the entire range that has better video or sales capabilities than the one series camera. So there's a lot of anticipation. That camera is supposed to be announced and will ship prior to the Paris Olympics, which will start sometime in July. So an announcement of the R5 Mark II certainly makes sense later in this year, maybe pre-orders available, and then start shipping early in 2024, with the R1 to be announced shortly thereafter. Pretty exciting stuff from Canon, right? And if you want to know more information about the Canon EOS R1, which is truly supposed to be the master of everything, 
I put out this video, well, probably, I, I can't even remember how long ago it was, but what I did was, is I did a forecast of what I believe could be in the specifications of the Canon EOS R1. I also looked at pricing and date, and I think my date might be wrong here, but what's really remarkable about that 30 minute video is I only spend 10 minutes talking about the Canon EOS R1. The previous 20 minutes, well, they take us down memory lane. They go back to the very first one series camera and I cover off every major one series model since. There are some models I don't cover, like I don't cover the DC versions, the video or the cinematic versions of the one series, but pretty well every major revision, every major successor going back to that very first camera. So go ahead and watch this video here. It's a great video to watch while you're waiting for the R1 or the R5 Mark II. Really excited about both those cameras. But now it's time to take another look at Nikon. We just got an announcement of the Nikon Z8. And of course the Nikon Z9 has been out for two years. But many people are wondering, what about the Nikon Z6 Mark III or the Nikon Z7 Mark III? Well, let's first of all take a look at the Nikon Z6 Mark III. We are expecting an announcement of this camera alongside the Z7 Mark III this fall. And what we're expecting for the Z6 Mark III to be is more or less a video-centric version. Um, it, it's still going to be a stills hybrid camera, but it's going to have a lot of good uh, video capabilities, but it's not going to be nearly as good as the Z8. So definitely no 8K video, no 8K 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. It's not going to have a CF Express Type B card slot. In terms of 20 frames per second, um, it, it's most likely going to be able to do that, but will it be able to have the same size buffer, the same speed buffer? And I definitely don't think so. Now, they could they could potentially lower that down to something like 14 frames per second or 16 frames per second. Um, and I think that would make a lot more sense than to give it 20 frames per second, uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now, the Nikon Z7 Mark III, well, this camera is going to be taking on a new leadership role. Instead of being what we thought the Nikon Z8 could potentially be at 61 plus megapixels, we're really looking towards the Nikon Z7 Mark III to be a high megapixel version of their lineup to be able to provide north of 60 megapixels. We don't know though if it's going to do something like 100 or 102 or 105 megapixels, but it's certainly the, the Nikon Z7 really has a new role now. It's going to be more of a stills hybrid camera, more, more focused on stills, more for photographers. And as the Nikon Z9 can do 45.7 megapixels, the Nikon Z8 can also do 45.7 megapixels. The Nikon Z7 at 47 megapixels isn't a huge amount, so it has to set itself apart from the competition within their own lineup, because they are competing against each other with 47 megapixels. I certainly think it makes an awful lot of sense to boost this up to something like 61 megapixels, increase the price, but also perhaps, perhaps, give it not only one, but two Type-B CF Express cards. And I think that would really, really help that would allow them to outcompete the Sony A7R5 because that camera only has a single Type A CF Express card. It limits it to about 10 frames per second at 61 megapixels. However, the Nikon Z7 Mark III, well, it could really change things up with a CF Express Type B card because the maximum sustained write speed, sustained write speed on a Type B card is right now Angelbird at, a, at around 1.48 five gigabytes per second. So you could hold down that shutter button at 20 frames per second lossless raw at around 45 megapixels, 20 frames per second, your buffer's not even gonna fill up. You're not even gonna touch the buffer. So it would allow you to go even faster than 20 frames per second based on 45 megapixels. Now increase that resolution up to 60 megapixels or even higher, and you should still be able to shoot much faster than 10 frames per second. So I think having a CF Express Type B on the Nikon Z7 Mark III could really change things up. The only question is, what are they going to do in terms of price point of this camera? Is it going to get is it going to get a stacked BSI sensor? It's plausible. It really depends on how they price this camera. Now, the Nikon Z6 Mark III, I don't believe it's going to get a BSI stacked sensor. I think it's going to be priced, well, so it's around $1,900 on sale right now. I think it's going to be somewhere around $2,500, but the Nikon Z7 Mark III, I could see them pushing this camera north of $3,000 if they do this really well. Otherwise, well, it's, it's with the Nikon Z8, it, the Nikon Z7 doesn't make a whole lot of sense the way it is right now. So they, I think they really have to push this high-end photography, photography centered camera that's able to do more than 10 frames per second at high megapixels. And I think that would really, really do well for it. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news and rumors whether, regarding whether it's Sony, Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, or even Pentex or OM Systems, 
then go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. And for all the minor news and rumors from all the major camera brands or even some of the minor brands, well, then go ahead and follow me on Twitter because I put out all sorts of tweets every day about new upcoming lenses, camera bodies, accessories, rumors, but I also put out pricing information. And right now we're seeing some pretty incredible prices. The Canon EOS R5 is on sale for around $33.99, along with a $350 battery grip. The Nikon Z6 and Nikon Z7 are off $400 and $300 respectively, and we're seeing sales on Sony gear as well as Panasonic. I think the S1H Mark II is also on sale some $500 off. So if you're looking at getting a new camera or an old camera or a backup camera, I highly recommend use my links down below for Adorama or B&H because there's some really amazing deals out there, not just camera bodies, but lenses as well. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching. And thank you so much for subscribing. You're the reason why this channel has reached 40,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.